Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the anatomy, that is the structure of the largest organ of human body. Then everyone will be, uh, there is a question that everyone's mind, it will come that, what is the largest organ of human body? So it is nothing but the skin. Okay, the skin is the largest organ of human body and which covers the entire human body and in the orifices, it continues as a mucous membrane. And if you see the surface area, the skin is having a surface area of 20 square feet. And you can see that uh, the different person may be having some different colors also. The skin color may be uh, varies from person to uh, person. We'll see why it happens. Now we'll uh, see regarding what is uh, different layers of skin and what are the different cell which is seen in the skin. So first we'll see the different layers of skin. The skin consists of mainly three different layers. The first one, it is the epidermis. The second one is dermis. And the third one, it is the hypodermis or we call it a subcutaneous layer. Come to the first one, that is the epidermis. The word itself, it says that epi, above, dermis. That means this, this particular layer, which is seen above the dermis layer. And we can say that this is the outermost layer of the skin. That means if you observe a person, what we are seeing as a skin, that means the outer layer of the skin, that is nothing but the epidermis. So again, this epidermis having five different layers. And we can say that this particular layer epidermis, which is made up of stratified keratinized squamous epithelium. The word itself, it says everything. That means epidermis is a stratified, means it is having different strata. Strata means different layers of keratinized. Keratinized is nothing but there is a protein substance which is present in that, that is termed as a keratin and keratinized squamous epithelium. Squamous means there will be a flattened cell. That means the epidermis is made up of different layers of flattened cell. That's why we are saying it's a stratified and it contains five different layers or five different stratum. We'll see one by one. Come to the first one, that is the stratum corneum. That is the outermost layer of the skin itself, we can say. This particular layer, that is a keratinized. That means in this layer, this uh, stratum corneum, which contains a particular substance called keratin, which is proteinaceous in nature. And that substance, this keratin, which helps the skin to be maintained, it's waterproof nature. Just below this uh, stratum corneum, there is another layer, stratum lucidum. And we can say this is the thickest layer of the skin and this one we can see only in our palms and soul. You can observe comparing with the, our, our different area, our palms, okay, the palm and the soul area will be very much thick because it is due to the presence of stratum lucidum. And just below to the stratum lucidum, there is another layer, granule-like structure we can observe in this one. That's why we termed it as a stratum granulosum. Just below this stratum granulosum, there is a spine-like structure. The cells are seen like a spine-like. It is termed as a stratum spinosum. And just below this one, there is a cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells will be present over the basement membrane that is termed as a stratum base. And apart from this one, there are four different types of cell which is seen in the epidermis layer. That is the keratinocyte which produces the keratin and another type of cell is melanocyte which produces the melanin. In the introduction part already I told that if you observe the person there may be different colors of the skin. This different colors of the skin it is due to the presence of this particular uh, melanin substance. And there is another type of cell that is a Merkel cell which is produced or uh, this is mainly useful for the touch sensation because it's, uh, it contains the touch receptors and uh, this is mainly helpful for the touch sensation of the skin. And there is one more type of cell which is seen in this epidermis layer that is a Langerhans cell which is usually produced from the bone marrow and the main function is immunity. Come to the second layer of skin that is the dermis. 
So if you come to this dermis layer that is seen just below the epidermis and this is mainly made up of fibro, uh, fibrous connective tissue we can say and mainly the collagen fibers will be present, some of the fat tissue will be there, some of the fibers will be present in this particular dermis layer and we can see that there are certain finger like projection in this particular layer that we uh, termed as a papillae. And the main function of this dermis layer, it is nothing but uh, synthesis of vitamin D. So whenever the sunlight which falls on our skin, there is a substance which is present in the skin that is the 7 dehydroxy cholesterol. This substance may be converting into vitamin D. So that is the uh, main function of this particular layer. And apart from this one, this is the layer, the dermis layer which contains certain accessory structure of the skin, maybe like a hair follicle set gland, sebaceous gland, all these things are present in this particular dermis layer. Come to the next layer, the hypodermis. This is the layer which is seen just below the dermis and mainly it is made up of fatty tissue. That's why we term this as a subcutaneous layer of the skin and it contains the major blood vessel. And the main function of this particular layer this one, it will act as a cushion for our internal organs and this layer can be termed as otherwise superficial fascia also. So these are the different three layers of our skin. Now we'll move to the functions of the skin. The sk uh, skin is having some of the important function. The first and foremost uh, function is protection. We can say that the skin, it is the first line of defense as well as it acts as a barrier between the human body and with the environment that means any of the foreign particles entry of the foreign particles will be prevented and injury will be prevented like that the protective and immune function the skin will be having and apart from that one it is having an another important function the sensation the sensation of touch heat cold pressure extra will be sensed through this particular skin and already I told that the another important function the synthesis of vitamin D from the sunlight that is another important function of the skin then apart from this one, the skin which prevent the water loss, regulation of body temperature, then excrete small amount of waste. These are the another important function of our skin. So today we have seen regarding what is the skin, what are the different layers and the functions of skin. So that's all for uh, today's class. Uh, this is Vishan signing off till we meet the next class. Thank you.